everybody this is Brian Hogue welcome to another night of chiller night live and tonight tonight I've got a uh, little bit of help uh, with uh, Tom Paisley Tom's gonna be joining me so Tom there he is hi yeah, <laughs> come sorry. on in Wait, sorry about that got a little choppiness there but uh, yeah but anyways, how are you doing tonight? I am doing well. How are you doing? Oh, pretty good. I'm feeling a little choppy tonight, but, you know, that's just me. Yeah. Well, Bonehead says, hey, hello, Chiller Night crew, Brian, Tom, and Oleans. Hey, Bonehead, thanks for joining us. All right. So, uh, I'll be putting up the huh. schedule here in a few minutes, and then, and then uh, we were at the end of the last week's show we had a topic that was brought up for tonight and that will be uh made for tv movies horror movies so stephanie says hey y'all hey stephanie thanks for joining us all right well i suppose i could put the schedule up right now and then we could jump right on to that to that topic there before i do that do, do you remember is any there's any uh made for tv horror movies stand out to you in particular you know it, it trilogy of terror is the one you know <laughs> yeah. it, it so it was like the first time i think i ever stayed up all night as a kid yeah it was uh wonderful and then there's my brother's movie which you haven't watched yet oh yeah, well i say my brother's movie it he had a small part in it and this was like in 1975 Death of Ocean View Park. Huh. Now, I have a list of um, these that I pulled up online. I wonder if that's actually on that list. I'll be curious to see. Um, the bonus is, we got double trouble tonight. Brian and Tom are together again. Yes. <laughs> Every <laughs> once in a while, we just got to get together and cause havoc. Richard says, Trilogy, Trilogy of Terror was very creepy. Yes, it was. Very creepy. Uh, oh, Jeff says, check out when Michael calls. That, Jeff, was was one of the movies that I did see with, uh, I didn't realize it had uh, actually Michael Douglas in that, so. But that is on that list that I pulled up. I pulled up a couple lists today to kind of prepare for this. But before I do that, uh, I'm going to go ahead and put the schedule up for this Saturday night on Stream TV. Saturday, May 13th on Stream TV. Of course, we'll be having this show right here. And at 9 o'clock, the feature movie of the week is Manos, The Hands of Fate. And uh, that was a request from a couple weeks ago. And uh, 1025, Children Shouldn't Play With Dead Things. Always a entertaining movie to watch. 1205, Adam Age Vampire. And then at 1.45 in the morning, The Werewolf of Washington. So there you go. There you can see those movies on this Saturday night on streammedia.tv. And that's all Eastern Time. So, all right. Pull that chat back up. Oh, Bonin says, wasn't Duel a TV movie of the week? It, it was. That was another one that was on the list. And uh, did you get a chance to pull up any on the any list of of of, of these uh, made for movie TVs? Uh, uh, I did not, but I will try that in a minute. I'm just trying to get into the chat on Google. I have to sign in. This is very embarrassing. <laughs> John says portions of tonight's show have been vacuum sealed and released for your entertainment enjoyment. It is now time for Chilla Night Live. This is Krozak the Grand, and now here's your host, Brian Hogue. Yes, I am here alongside Tom Paisley, who's, who's joining me tonight. Um, but it says, I do recall that Dan Curtis made some pretty awesome TV movies. He directed a few good ones. SBC says, hello, everyone. Yes. Um, Tom mentioned Trilogy of Terror, and that was actually the very first uh, one we did for our watch party when we got the uh, the Chiller Night Facebook group page up. 
So I, I remember that one because I was I was excited to see that again because I hadn't seen it since I was a little kid, since it was actually on TV. I've known about it, but I, I hadn't seen it again since all that time. So. Uh, okay, dual, yeah. That's right. All right. You can, um, see, you can see the YouTube chats. That's cool. That's right. I can. I can't see it. Well, I have to open up the uh, the uh, uh, Facebook ones. Uh, who did that? Uh, ABC Movie of the Week. Which one? Trilogy of Terror? I don't know. Let me see if it says. Uh, I'm going to... The movie of the week was was always ABC, right? Oh, I can't pull that up. I can't pull that up. Oh, that, that's what I'm here for. That's right. That's right. That's right. I was going to say, am I if I did for? that, you might disappear. <laughs> yeah, I don't want to disappear. Yes, Dennis Weaver starred in uh, Duel. Uh, and Trilogy Terror was that. Jeff says Let's the, the Norless tapes. The Over the Hill Gang. The Spy Killer. I don't remember that one. Moon of the Wolf, Jeff says. Yep, yeah, that was on the list. I saw all of these that you're mentioning. That's that's pretty cool. I guess I'm, I'll, I'll pull this up on my phone. Uh, made for... Made for TV. Because unfortunately, if I look at the list that I have on my screen, I don't want to make Tom disappear. Okay. Let's see here. Ten. Months. Oh, I mean, I... what's that? I'm just, uh, oh, that was just season one. <laughs> Night Slaves. The Old Man Who Cried Wolf. I Half of these I've never heard before. Just as home for the holidays. Bonus says, I remember the Screaming Woman and Moon of the Wolf and Scream of the Wolf. Now here's huh. one that I saw today that I, I was thinking, of course, I remember watching this when it came on. Dark Night of the Scarecrow. Do you remember that one? Back no, I don't. But um, Alias Smith and Jones, remember that? I remember that, that. show. That was, a, that was a series. I used to watch that. On it the... was, but there, but the um, the pilot was on the ABC Movie of the Week. Oh, I didn't know that. Huh. Yeah, Ooh, there's... Long Streets. Yeah, Dark Knight of the Scarecrow, Duel, Ghost, what? Salem's Lot. Of course, we, we I think we mentioned Salem's Lot last week. Uh, and then Jeff mentioned the Night Stalker. Duel, that was 1971. Here, here's one that I do remember watching as a kid, and it kind of freaked me out when I was little. But it was Frankenstein, the true story. It was from 1973. And I do remember that being I, on TV. I saw that. I saw that one when it aired. I remember that. I watched it, and I thought, what the hell? Hey, where's Karloff? Come on. Yeah. I did too. I watched that and I thought I, I was confused because the monster looked so different than what I was accustomed to. That was out in 1973. And that's the only time I saw it was when it was on TV that night. Yes, I do. And Brian's song. Oh, man, I cried like a baby. Oh. Uh, let's see. Woman in Black. Um I like these made-for-TV movies, as Ooh. we said. You know what? Uh, it's not officially a pilot, but the, the 1972, January 11th, The Night Stalker was on ABC Movie of the Week. Uh, those, I remember watching those the nights that they were actually on, like, for the first time. And I used to love that. Uh, of course, they had the movie, and then... I, I, I'm trying to remember how that happened. Uh, they, I assume they had the movie and then the series afterwards, but uh, I remember. Yeah, but you know what else? What's that? You know what else premiered? You know what else premiered on there? What? In 1972, Kung Fu. Oh, 
okay. Kung Fu was officially premiered on ABC Movie of the Week. I guess it was a a way to do that. Put the, put, what, what, like the pilot, showing the pilot, I guess, you know, t test. Well, the yeah, the, the hour long or the two hour long or the hour and a half long pilot. What was the, uh, two for the money, Kung Fu was, uh, is that, it can't be that, 340, 341, 3. I don't know how long it was. It's not telling me. I don't see that. I just have horror movies on, on my list, but that's pretty cool. I used to love watching Kung Fu. Moon of the Wolf, somebody mentioned that. Count Dracula, 1977 TV movie. Count Dracula, let's see who played Dracula. Um, Louis Jordan. I wonder if this was a there was the a, a, an American production. I don't remember. Ah, uh, yes, absolutely. I, I think everything was. The Devil's Daughter with Shelley Winters. It's 1973. Yeah, I'm on just the Wikipedia ABC Movie of the Week thing, and it's showing all six seasons. Oh, of no way. Every... Is that right? That'd be pretty yeah. neat to see. That'd be quite the the and, trip down uh, your lane. They did three six million dollar mans before they started the series on that. No way, is that right? I didn't know that. Uh, apparently, former astronaut Steve Austin is critically injured in the crash of an experimental aircraft. Blah blah blah. Lee Majors, first of three TV movies, which would lead to the seventy three to seventy eight TV series, The Six Million Dollar Man. So that was really something to uh, to show things off. Yeah, they're not. They're not really. Yeah, there's a, a Satan's School for Girls, seventy three. John uh, says. It's about. John says there's no Facebook. Uh, there's no show on Facebook tonight. Update no Facebook page for your show. Huh. that's weird. I wonder you why. Did, you did. You did restream, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. That's how we're on. That's why we're on. Uh, YouTube. I'm just looking. I'm just looking at us on YouTube. Oh, so, okay. Well, Stone Cold Steve Austin. Yeah, good one, Bonehead. You Bonehead. Bonehead says, "Wow, I'm learning a lot about TV movies that became series tonight. Good job, Brian and Tom. Yeah, I am too. I didn't know. I didn't know some of that." Paul says, hey, family, how are y'all? Renfield is great. Okay, all right. I haven't seen that one yet. Love you all. Give Ava a huge hug for me. Can't wait. We're all going to need therapy after with Dr. Jack. Oh, you mean with Manos, the hands of fate, I'm sure. Yeah. <laughs> Almost. I'm seeing your show on Facebook. You are? Okay. Cool. Yeah, it's it's right, 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 right. Well, well, I guess I can't really. Awesome, because I I'm I'm not. It's there. Trust me. Facebook, so I'm glad you can. It's just a, <laughs> mine's just a dark screen. <laughs> um. Well, mine's a dark screen until I hit the the go, and then it oh, okay. it starts up. I'm afraid to do that. I don't want to mess anything up. <laughs> You're not gonna mess up your stream. I wouldn't think. I would hope not. Uh, I don't know there's either. a way, I'll find it. Um, Bonehead says, they don't call me Bonehead just because of my looks, Tom. Jeff says, I've seen your looks. You're on You're on Facebook. You've got a big skull. Jeff says, Snow Beast. Yeah, Snow Beast. We just played that one not, not too long ago in Chiller Night Theater. Um, let's see. Gary says, I read that Jason Voorhees is officially a... Dead, deadite? Deadite? I'm not sure what that is. I don't either. Deadite. What is that, Gary? Uh, John says, Dan Curtis also did his versions of Frankenstein, Dracula, and Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. Huh. That was pretty neat. Hey, Paul. How's it going? Dude, you rock. Um, I wonder what Vincent Price double feature that is. 
Yeah, yeah. Which which movies are they playing, Stephanie? Dale says, when do we create a platform to bring back the Thursday night movies? Hope all is well, everyone. Uh, oh, dead eyes are from Evil Dale. Dead. I would love that. Dead eyes apparently are from the Evil Dead, and uh, I, I I have not watched that. I need to. You know, there are just some movies that you gotta wait. You know, until so when you're at a ripe old age, you have something to watch. Yeah, you gotta. You haven't seen you it all. Pace yourself. Yeah. <laughs> you do. You really do. <laughs> Jeff says, "Terror at London Bridge." Terror. I'm not familiar with that one. Oh, bonus and deadites are from Evil Dead. This Tom just said. Okay. Well, that's because I'm getting my chats um, on YouTube real time. Mm. Monsters from the Evil Dead. Okay, Gary Gary said that too. Okay, Paul's The Pit and the Pendulum and Fall of the House of Usher is what the, uh, the double featured. Cool. Those are some good ones. You know, I, I actually I, I actually met him once. He did a show. When I was in high school up in Canada, near where my high school was, and um, it was uh, it was it was called Diversions and Delights. It was uh, a one man show, um, and and you know he came out afterwards and signed the programs and everything. He was just chatting with people. Really, really nice guy. Oh, that'd be neat. That's quite a memory. I think was. Well, I I. I only have a couple of autographs that I've gotten in my life because uh, I was never one to go, hey, God, sign this for me. Okay, I can't do that. Sign my shoulder. Uh -huh. um, so, but that was one because he was, you know, he was one of the heavy hitters. He was one of the big, oh, yeah. big league guys. I mean, it's, it's, it's rough, you know, trying to find an old movie from the 40s and 50s of that genre without him in it. I mean, it really is. It's kind of like a John Carradine. I mean, you, you just, it's hard to find a movie without him in that era. <laughs> right, right. And, and, and John, John Carradine was in like every genre too. Not only every movie, <laughs> but every genre it seemed. Bonin says, Tom, you're going to enjoy all three of the Evil Dead movies. David Hasselhoff and Stephanie Kramer are in that London Bridge movie. The Hall. Yeah, okay. Kevin says, uh, good evening. Good evening. Kevin, no, thanks I, for joining us. Yeah, I, uh, I've, I've been. People have been telling me for decades that I need to watch that, and I just haven't, haven't done it yet. I need to. <laughs> there are there are sometimes I, I hear of a movie that I'm well like acquainted with the title, and it's a big deal. It's probably you know a big cult classic, you know cult favorite. But uh, I. And, and as a horror host, you know, I should I should have watched it, but sometimes I I find myself like <laughs> I just haven't mm. seen it. I've seen Evil Dead, but I don't think I've seen all of them. I didn't know there were three. I knew there was a, a second one. Um, I guess I am a little out of touch. I need to get out more. Hammer House of Horror from 1980. Um, the Langoliers and, and It. Now, those are some Stephen King movies. Uh, that's from 1990 and 1995. So, the ones that get me are from like the 70s and 80s, seeing those ones. The Night Strangler, 1973. And then the Night Stalker is 19. So the Night Stalker was the first one, and then the Night Strangler. Yeah. Yeah. Killdozer. I know that that's brought up every once in a while. Killdozer. Oh, Jeff. <laughs> I just looked up, and he says, Killdozer, Killdozer with Clint Walker. Yep. Oh, in 1973, Scream Pretty Peggy with Betty Davis, of all people. There's Snow Beast, that was mentioned, that was in 1977. Uh, the Cat Creature. And, of course, Gargoyles. Remember the Gargoyles? Who hasn't seen Gargoyles? Uh, have you seen Gargoyles? <laughs> Remember that movie? I don't know. I don't know if I've seen that one. Oh. 
what was that 77 may not have in 77 i was living in england so i kind of after after 75 i kind of didn't see any of the stuff on 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 american tv i miss stuff you know when i was over in england also like 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 night of the living dead remake you know from 1990 like I remember somebody oh. asked me on here, "What do you think about the uh, the reviews on that at, when it first came out?" And I was like, "I, I really don't. I didn't even know it was out when because I was overseas and didn't get a lot of this information." I'm trying to find garbage. Yeah, I, I was in England for three years and then I was moved to Canada for nine, and so I was like, there was like over a decade that I didn't see any American TV. Yeah, you don't have a. You don't have a lot to choose from over there, or you didn't, anyways. At the, you know, when when I was over there, uh, we had like three channels. <laughs> uh, where? Over in England. Oh, here we go. Oh yeah. Gargoyles. I, 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 was... I, the TV. What's that? Uh, no, I just say it's funny because I we had a TV that had four buttons on it. And you push those. I mean, you could turn them to tune in the channel a little bit, but when you pushed it, it went to that channel. And they only had four. Uh -huh. And so I think that was BBC One, BBC Two, ITV, and something else. That sounds that sounds about right. <laughs> Gargoyles, 1972. That's so cool. Again, I, re I remember watching this stuff. Like, I was very young. I remember watching it when it... You know, like when it came out, Trilogy of Terror, like you said, you mentioned earlier. Oh, there's a Trilogy of Terror Part Two that I didn't even know about. What? 1996 TV movie. 96? Yeah. Have any of you viewers, have, uh. you, have any of you guys ever heard of Trilogy of Terror Two? I've never heard of that until I just, until today. I saw this earlier today. Huh. Let's see. Oh, Legend of Boggy Creek, Paul says, yeah. Bonehead says, Bonehead says, I think Bonehead keeps harping on Killdozer. <laughs> Jeff says, Invitation to Hell. I think I saw that on this list here. I'll see what, what year that came up. Boy, this is a real, like I said, a walk down memory lane here. Uh, just seeing some of these titles. Here's one V. Uh, I know that was uh, like a mini series, and not not horror, but uh, with the sci-fi with those lizard aliens before it became a series. What do you say? Invitation to Hell. Hmm. Mm. Let me see. I thought I saw that on here, but maybe I didn't. Maybe I didn't. Um, Stephanie says, is it me, or am I really seeing a flying saucer above you guys? Every once in a while. Every once in a while it goes, makes its rounds around the dark domain. John says, I think that Rankin and Bass, the guys who gave us holiday features like Santa Claus coming to town and Here Comes Peter Cottontail, also did several <laughs> TV movies. The most notable are The Bermuda Deaths and The Last Dinosaur. I remember watching The Last Dinosaur the night it came out, the night it was featured. Yeah, they did do that one uh, with Richard Boone and uh, Joan Van Ark. They were on that movie. Um, so, Paul, uh, your question about how are we doing this? Uh, <laughs> um, we're, 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 we're very lucky that it's working at all. I'm a little bit uh, uh, glitchy tonight for some reason. We, we're using a different streaming software. But basically what I do is we get on a chat program, a video chat program, and um, he can add it to it as a layer on his OBS. And I have my green screen synced up with what his green screen is so it kind of works this way it's something we worked out a number of months ago and it 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 it's it's we're starting to get the hang of it yes yeah so really um, good tonight there is some glitches every once in a while as far as like freezing but yeah 
But I think that's I think that's Teams because we're using Teams as a chat thing. I know we didn't have this problem with Zoom, but we also didn't have uh, the the quality of the picture wasn't as good. Yeah. Jessica Boyles um, was Scott Glenn's first movie. I did not know that. That's pretty neat. Bonehead says, this is definitely an eye-opening and informative episode tonight, guys. You just hit this one out of the park. Awesome. Yeah, this is pretty neat. Autumn says, hi, Brian. Hey, Autumn. Thanks for joining us. All right. Which comments do you see? Do you see any comments here, Tom? What am I looking for? Just uh, some comments. Uh the Friday the 13th TV show. Uh, no, uh, not yet. Uh, Paul asked how we did the split screen. Oh, okay. Friday the 13th the TV show. The girl's name is Robbie. Try to remember that from two weeks ago. Oh. And yins. What does yins mean? You yins. You, you, you yins. Like you. <laughs> Is that, is, that a, is that akin to being like two Utes or that's something? A, that's like a Pittsburgh thing, isn't it? I don't know. I've never been to Pittsburgh. Well, I've been. I've driven through it. And Yins too will will tell two friends, and they'll tell two friends, and <laughs> so on and so on. You're showing your age, bonehead. <laughs> oh, there's some neat, neat uh, movie titles here tonight. Now, I would love to be able to play these. Wouldn't that be awesome if I could actually play these for Chiller Night Theater? Oh, it's the Pittsburgh version of Y'all. Okay, now I understand it perfectly. Yeah. You never heard that. I've seen it on here before, but I thought y'all were just like, you know, <laughs> terrible spellers, you know. No, it's a word. It gets said. <laughs> oh, the, uh, Jeff says, The Victim with Elizabeth Montgomery. Oh, I didn't know I didn't know this movie. I don't really hear a lot with Elizabeth Montgomery other than uh, the Bewitched. series that she was in. Yeah, Bewitched. Oh. There's like, gosh, there's like t probably 150 movies on this list, so. Huh. It's kind of cool. Okay. Ah, also, Cajun for y'all. Cajun for y'all. For y'all. <laughs> Cajun is that is that the uh, is that the root of this word? Is it is it a Cajun word? Is it? Well, I I, I don't know. I mean, I think like Yens is Cajun for y'all, but uh, it can't be Pittsburgh Cajun because I don't think I think those are mutually exclusive. I may be wrong says good evening good evening roger thanks for joining us roger tonight or anybody else uh, coming on just now we're just we're the the theme of tonight is made for tv movies mm -hmm. horror movies uh but we have mentioned some others uh, outside that genre but well speaking of made for some sort of media movies you should probably talk about the movies next weekend because it's half it's it's 7 30 8 30 your time Oh, okay. I'm gonna, right. Have you Put shown them the schedule? Movie? And then, uh, yeah. And then I want to hear about this movie that your brother was in one uh, again. And I'll see. I'll, I'll look that up. The schedule for this. All right, this Saturday on May 13th on Stream TV. It's, uh, you can find that at StreamMedia.tv at 8 p.m. Eastern Time. You'll see this show right here. So you get to see it again. Yay! And then at 9 p.m. the movie is Manos: The Hands of Fate. And then right after that, these movies are back to back, folks. 1025, the movie is Children Shouldn't Play with Dead Things. Uh, very, very, I think it's an excellent zombie movie uh, from back in 72, I believe. 1205, the movie is Adam Age Vampires, or Vampire. And then at 145, the movie is The Werewolf of Washington. All right, 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 right. So. Um, let me see if there's any other Legend of Lizzie Borden also with Elizabeth Montgomery I didn't realize that she oh the Lizzie yeah Lizzie Borden one I remember she did the burning bed or something 
Raymond! Hey, Raymond says, Brian! Get a little wave. Hey, Raymond, thanks for joining us. Friday the 13th remake fan film, YouTube. Oh, that's right, Paul, you have mentioned that before. I, I've just never, never seemed to remember to, to watch that. You think I would? I do like Friday the 13th movies. He says, hello, Brian, Invasion of the Body Snatchers. Ah, good movie, good movie. Definitely. Bonus says, I drove truck a lot in Louisiana and never heard it spoken down there. Matter of fact, they didn't know what it meant, LOL. Uh-huh. I don't know. Where'd you get that that was a, a Cajun? Uh, <laughs> Cajun for y'all. <laughs> Oh, uh, that's kind of funny. Said, uh, Paul said. No, Paul. Yeah, Paul mentioned that, but I was wondering where. Down he... south Louisiana. Huh. I never knew it was Cajun. I always thought it was Pittsburgh geese. Yeah, Pittsburgh I thought geese. it was Pittsburgh. Um, all right. What's the name of the movie that your brother was in? Um, that was the uh, uh, the Death of Ocean View Park, which was characterized as a thriller, and it was 1979. So I think theoretically it was outside the scope of the ABC movie of the week. He had one scene in it, you know, he's supposed to take Mayor Winningham on a date or something, and he he ends up not doing that. It's it was it was kind of a kick in the pants to see my brother on TV, even for two minutes, which is about how long it seemed. But this had um uh who is in it? Who is in it? in it? Mike Collin Mike Connors, yeah. Diana Canova. Uh, Mary Winningham, Martin Landau. Yeah. Oh, wow, that would have been cool. I mean, heavy hitters, but definitely a made-for-TV movie. That's neat. And, you know, IMDb rating is 5.5 out of 10. So it certainly falls into... I mean, you can watch it on YouTube. And somebody had mentioned before, a lot of the movies that we're mentioning now are are can can be watched on YouTube, whether they're supposed to be on there or not, but... <laughs> hey, it's Raymond Sherman. Yes. Hey, Raymond. Wow, it's nice to see some of the crew on here. Nice. Um, I think my video's cleared up. I'm not really going, I'm not stopping, hey, starting. Looking, looking all right there. Okay. That was in 1979. 79, yeah. Interesting. All right, I'll go back to made for TV. Was it a, did you say it was made for TV movie? It was made for TV. Um, I had thought it was one of the ABC movies of the week, but I, I, I'm looking at this thing here. It looks like they, they didn't go up to 79. They went up to 77 or something, 76 or something. Okay, that's, um, that's something I was wondering 75. about a little bit ago is... During what years did they play the movie of the week? From 1969 to 1975 is what Wikipedia is saying. Season one to season six. Is that just for ABC? That's the ABC movie of the week. Okay. Um, I think I think they had a lock on the movie of the week. Okay, that's that. I didn't know if the other channels had, but uh, okay, that's cool. Sixty. Um, what did you say? 60. Why, why, yes, Paul, I do have a screen on my left side. And that's where I see the things that you write. <laughs> and I have one right here, which, well, I see maybe right here, um, which is what I'm looking at on, the, uh, on the, my browser so I can appear smart. <laughs> okay, the best made for TV. Let me go back to I am... IMBD, folks, if you're watching, you're wondering where I got, you know, that's the, that's the list I'm, I'm looking at here. It starts out with Dark Knight of the Scarecrow that I mentioned earlier, Duels, the very second movie, Ghost Watch, I, I don't know that one because this is 1992, probably, so probably, obviously not one. You said ABC Movie of the Week stopped in 70-something, right? 77. 75 is what is what Wikipedia is saying. Okay. Um, yeah, September 23rd, 1969 to May 14th, 1975. 
Well, I tell you, if you want to, if you want to go through and just kind of, like I say, kind of go down that nostalgic trip down memory lane, go, go to, go to this list here and just walk down, <laughs> go down, scroll down through some of these titles. Well, now, uh, Death of Ocean View Park is uh, categorized as a thriller. It's got some weird stuff to it. There's like an a, a electrical storm that comes through and the park rides start going crazy, kind of like these birds. And, um, you know, starts killing people and stuff. Not to ruin it or anything. I can't even remember how it ends. It's been a while since I've seen it. But it's on YouTube. Oh, it is? Okay. It is on YouTube in its entirety. <laughs> it's... Go figure. I guess there is a limit to uh, copyright infringement. <laughs> Unless I'm doing it. <laughs> Bonus says it really does look like they're sitting side by side, don't it? <laughs> <laughs> Raymond says I remember ABC showing movies of the week. Yeah, those were. That was quite a time. Bonus says I wanted to get glasses so I'd look sophisticated whenever I said something stupid, but I ain't got no ears on me, skull. No, no, it didn't work out too well, would it? Or even uh, eyes. too bad. I don't know. Do you have eyes? Uh, no, SB saying it's too bad there aren't any good TV movies these days. Now, is he talking about? He's from Germany, right? I believe so. Yeah, I think so. He's talking about German TV. I don't know about here. I mean, I don't even watch TV anymore. I mean, I. It's, you know, there's so much online content. I mean, you know, there's more stuff coming from one of these streaming channels than I ever got in you know decades of of watching tv i mean you talk about england and their three channels well maybe we have five channels when i'm in the states you know you had like channel four and channel six and channel 12 and then you had channel 67 and you know 81 you know you had all that that's where you found all the interesting things on that's where my local uh, uh horror host was was broadcasting from not from the the network ones at the low end but it was always one of those higher numbers. Now, who was your horror host again? Um, uh, 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 I think it was the Body Bowman, and um, it was uh, the, the Chesapeake, uh, Norfolk, Virginia area. Hmm. Um, in the seventies, and there's this one thing. I mean, I got the uh, there. There's a movie, a, a documentary out that I I bought on Amazon. I never buy movies on Amazon for streaming because it's like, okay, I bought my movie, and I'm like, sending me, how do I download this? It's like you can't download this. <laughs> I just bought it. No, you didn't buy it. Well, you did buy it, but you don't own it. You can't like you can only watch it when you want to. Um, anyway, there was a movie that I got a documentary uh, uh, called American Scary about. And it, it had everybody. It even had your guy, and it had um, uh, you know everyone who was doing this over there. And they had one segment on this guy, and they, they had a great story of one day they they had to empty out the studio to paint the floor black, so they put everything out in the parking lot, including Bowman's coffin. And when they go out there, the coffin's missing. Oh, this is like in late '60s, and. They start walking around the neighborhood and they find these two kids with the coffin charging <laughs> other kids a quarter to get in the coffin for five minutes. <laughs> Not a bad idea, you know. Not a bad idea at all. <laughs> but uh, if you ever get a chance to see that, I would. It would, uh, it, you know, there's a lot of um, rarely known uh, horror hosts that they go into there. They, they really try to do it methodically. That's the American scary. Scary. Okay. American scary. Let's see. Bonus says, "Well, I remember back when we all oh, what when all we had was ABC, NBC, and CBS. Then we moved to Canada. Ah, okay. yeah. I was right with you, Bonehead. Yeah. Then it's just, and then you got a lot of, you know, normal uh, uh, piped in content until they got into the oh Canadian content. So then it it they started to not do that. However, uh, for the entire eastern part of Canada, they had they they would they didn't have the cable infrastructure in. So you would get the cable piped in from Maine, but you got the cable piped in from Bangor, Maine, tiny little place in Maine, you know, a little city in there. And all of us, you know, got all the farm reports from Bangor, Maine and, you know, Stacy's Country Jamboree 
and all this, you know, really weird local content from this one little spot. It was very, very strange. But, you know, who else lived near Bangor, Maine? Um, um, uh, Stephen King. So you'd see him occasionally on a, a public service message uh, thing that, that came on. It was, it was very, very interesting. Interesting. That's pretty cool. Uh, SBC says German films are rarely are very rarely good, but thanks to satellite and streaming, I can see the international program. Uh, oh, that's cool. Raymond says, I thought the Canadians came to the U.S. to make movies. I think the U.S. Uh, goes to Canada to make movies, too, though, because it was uh, I heard it was cheaper to do production or something up there. There was some reason for it. I do remember. Uh, it used to be. It used to be, and then they, they, they caught on to that. Uh, when I lived in Los Angeles in, uh, what, 1990 to 93, uh, actually Los Angeles was technically, I might have to explain this, the third largest Canadian city. There were so many Canadians in there. There were only two other places on this planet that had more Canadians. One was Toronto, the other was Vancouver or something. And then and there was LA because of the entertainment industry and all the Canadian production companies coming down there. And then you had things like... Uh, uh, the X Files was made up in uh, Vancouver, Vancouver yeah. and uh, you know, and but then I think the last season they brought it down to Los Angeles, and then it was off. So I don't know if that had anything to do with it, but uh, yeah, they've had a very, very close relationship in the entertainment industry with U.S. and Canada. Hmm. Uh, bonus is SBC. I gotta say, Das Boots or Das Boot is definitely my favorite German movie. Not me, Nosferatu, all the way. Even even the remake. Awesome. Oh, yeah, you know, with Klaus Kinski. It's awesome. Um, yeah, so what, what do you, what do you, what got you into the horror, uh, into loving horror movie? Do you, do you remember a movie from your childhood or, or something that just, that just kind of made you kind of fall in love with this kind of thing? I think it was mostly, uh, you know, what I grew up with. Obviously, you know, my, my mom, I mean, my mom was so protective. I mean, she wouldn't even let us watch the Three Stooges because he used to give my brother nightmares with, you know, getting poked in the eye. Uh, but, you know, I, I occasionally, I mean, it's like when you get into these, that's why I really love the horror hosts because, you know, it came on so late. And you can get a little black and white portable TV and kind of zoom into it and you can watch. And, you know, there was the... Uh, Oh, what was that first release, that first and second release of horror films um, like that shock went out for syndication? Or something like that? Or... Shock Theater, Shock yeah. Theater. And then there was yeah. a Shock Theater, too. And so, uh, you know, watching so many of these, you know, the classic ones. That's why I love the classic ones so much, you know, like Dracula and yeah. Frankenstein and The Mummy and all that stuff. And it just, uh, I, I thought it was really, really cool. In fact, I, you know, most of those things I've, I've actually got on 16 millimeter now. I just like to have an old projector. And some of them were TV prints. So I wonder, I mean, I do have my, you know, I, I have a really clean Dracula 16 millimeter print that was actually made for showing on television back in the day when they'd actually get a four bladed projector, project the movie and stick a TV camera right in the lens and focus on the film plane. That's how they used to do it. And when the film broke, that's when they've got out the card to put in front of the, the camera to say, you know, experiencing technical difficulties. And they were trying to splice this thing together real fast. And occasionally, <laughs> occasionally you can find these things with the commercials still spliced in. Um, because what they were supposed to do is get it, splice in the commercials, run the film, take out the commercials, send it on to the next one. Um, but, uh, yeah, I always kind of love that, um, that sort of classic um, universal monster model of movie making and i think that's what really got me and i have you know i've been in and out a little bit of some of the more modern ones but i've tried to stay up with it i mean i'm not so much on just the gore you know I'm not like the chainsaw and cutting off limbs and stuff like that there, what, what was it that hitchcock said there's no there's no terror in a bang there's only only in the anticipation of it and I think that's really true, even with horror films. You know, he was known more for thrillers, but but uh, for horror films, it's the same thing. It's like saying, oh, my God, what's going to happen next? And 
I'm never a big one for those, uh, you know, sort of, um, like, what they call it, but... or something like that. Yeah, I mean, I saw the ring and that was really creepy and I really liked it, but you know, I didn't see the any of the follow on movies of that. Um, but you know, I've always been a big fan of, of the, the old black and white, even back into the silent movies. So, you know, Cabinet of Dr. Caligari and Nosferatu and uh, Vampire. Vampire, that's how you say it, Vampire. With the Y. Um, I don't know why I know that, because uh, it's Carl Dreyer, uh, another great, uh, you know, filmmaker, European. Um, Phantom of the Opera. So, Phantom one. of the Opera, yeah, that was the first universe, that was the universal film that kicked them all off. It was it was still in the silent stage, and I think the nice. next one was, was Dracula. Yeah, yeah. Um, Paul's, uh, Paul's leaving. Yeah, he's... Oh, don't night. go. Oh, don't back go. Oh, well. Can't wait for Manos, he says. All right. <laughs> uh, Raymond's, Raymond says his YouTube is buffering a lot. Oh, no. Um, actually, uh, I, I don't even have this thing running. I, I just have it up for the chat, the... Uh, the the YouTube is is paused, and I'm getting it from this. So yeah, I'm not. I'm, I don't know if that's happening or not. Oh, is it? Okay, I'm just looking at the OBS screen, and it's it's pretty clear and moving pretty well there. But I'm not. I, I can't see it on on YouTube. I hope it's. Uh, I hope it straightens up. But yeah, Paul's leaving us. Oh, there he goes. Um, yeah, I'm the same way. I, I just fell in love with the uh, the black and whites, and then at that at that at that time. Now this is back in like the early '70s, and I'm you know at the time maybe I'm I'm, I'm four, five, six, maybe I, I I don't know when, but I just remember more feelings and you know like the the toys that were coming out at the time, you know the Frankenstein, Dracula, and stuff like that. So. I had just this love for for these things, and then or every Halloween, I'm seeing the the Frankenstein masks and things like that. So I've just always had this thrill, this excitement for it. And then every Saturday night, watching Chiller to Theater with Chili Billy Cardell, it, it just I just I don't know. There was something almost uh, almost uh, like a like a little slice of Christmas every Saturday night in a way. You know, I was so excited to watch to watch the monster movies. But yeah, I, I don't really get it. Uh, well, Universal Hammer was, you know, was, yeah. Was See, right that's where I was gonna go. Um, you know, the the Universal kicked me off of it, but when I moved to England, then I started seeing the Hammer films, and that was crazy. And from what I've read, I mean, one of the things, one of the reasons they decided to do this was, you know, more of it because at that point, you know, most of these movies were thirty years old or more, and you know, black and white and everything, and. The thing that I that I think hit me first that I remember is just how much color there was in this. I mean, you know, these red, you know, everywhere and everything. It was like, it was like that was their raison d'etre. You know, as our reason for being is to make these colorful and modern and sexy and you know by today's standards. I mean, of course, Dracula was considered a bit along those lines back in the day. Yeah, uh, Lugosi was quite a ladies' man in the in the press. Um, but yeah, and then, you know, that certainly pushed it along. It was the, it was the, uh, oh, the, the, the Japanese horror films that kind of threw me for a loop. You know, when you go see something like Frankenstein, it's like, that doesn't look anything like Frankenstein. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I've kind of gotten more into them later in life, you know, but they were, they were so different in how they were interpreting some of these stories. Um, you know, it's, it, it's kind of like the old, the old, uh, thing with, um, the spaghetti westerns, you know, you had, uh, you know, the Japanese, you know, Kurosawa writing Japanese uh, uh, movies based on Shakespeare ones. And then you had Sergio Leone yeah. copying those things and making them, you know, in Italy yeah. for westerns. And it's just like the, the there's something that sort of hangs throughout that whole process, but it, it's they're all so wonderfully unique. 
it, it, it was funny you were talking about the the bright you know the colors and that but it's it's funny with the, the with the hammer movies the blood was always so like super super bright red you know <laughs> How the you hammer what the blood the, the color of the blood and those hammer movies was always it so, was so red. it was more red than red yeah <laughs> let's see oh bonin says youtube screen video is good down here in the deep heart of texas lol awesome and then bonin says yeah brian you're absolutely right chiller theater wasn't just a show it was a weekly event to look forward to and enjoy yeah yeah it was just like i, I remember <laughs> there were very few things that the whole family would in my house <laughs> that we would all make a point to sit together and watch. And that was one of them. That was definitely one of those uh, weekly shows. So I have good memories in that regard as well, because I associate that with, you know, like a family fun event, you know, watching the old spooky movies at night. SBC says the big difference between German TV films and the American ones is nudity. In the U.S. ones, you hardly <laughs> see any anything any skin. Brian knows all about that. He's had to go in there and cut that stuff out. Cut it out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that was one thing I noticed. One 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 time I was when we were living in England and we were sitting and watching, you know, a family show, some made for television thing there, and um, I, you know. So my mom over here, my grandmother over here, and all of a sudden there's this naked woman on the screen, and I'm like, am I supposed to leave now or what? <laughs> yeah. This ain't right. I did not expect oh, that. I was like, that was my whole introduction to, okay, Europeans have much different different standards for that sort of thing than we do yeah. in the good old stateside. Yeah. Brian says, hello, everyone. Hey, Brian, thanks for joining us. Um, Bonin says, Hammer Horror was an amazing watch no matter what movie it was. Yeah. I just love those. I just love the, the, just the feel, the atmosphere. And there were some Italian movies that really brought and delivered that as well. Like, you know, we, we have had a few on that I was able to play for Chill and Night Theater that I really, really enjoyed doing. Uh, while Lady Frankenstein, you're talking about me. You know, censoring some of the stuff in you know some of these movies. That was definitely <laughs> wasn't one the of only them. one. Wasn't the only one, but that that was one I do remember. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, because of that reason, because like when I grew up, you know, I was always watching this with my family. I thought, well, yeah, they're monster movies. They got blood. They got some some degree of gore. But uh, you know, but that's you know, I I did I just wanted to <laughs> if you yeah, if you're watching this with your kids. Yeah, no uh, you're right, Jason. Herzog's Nosferatu is an awesome film. Um, 1979. Huh. You know, I've never seen that one. I've oh, you seen, haven't? I, I know, I've never seen that version of it. It's it's really good. It it. it uh, I mean, I'm aware of the movie. It. I just I've just never watched it for whatever reason. I just. They they changed a little bit about the story, which I you know kind of makes sense. I mean, some of it you don't know that they changed till the very end, but it's uh, you know I I sometimes hmm, I don't know about that, but I I love Herzog. I mean, Fitzcarraldo is one of my favorite movies of all time. He's just a master filmmaker. Um, and I don't. What was your favorite Hammer horror film? That's a good question. I don't know if it's like Universal. What's my favorite one? That's so hard to tell. I mean, I guess, you know, The Blood of Dracula. I mean, or The Horror of Dracula, I mean. Um, yeah, the blood I, I think that's the one I would... The Horror of Dracula, yeah. I think that's where I would go back to every time. I've seen it a number of times, but it's such a well-made movie. And it was an early one. I don't I don't know if that was the first one they, they, they tried doing it in was, that genre it, or not. It was the same year as as the the first Frankenstein one that they did, but 1958. Uh, they, those both came out in the same year, I believe. Just like 1931 was, you know, for, for Universal with uh, Frankenstein and Dracula. So that was kind of cool. No, uh, I agree. Bonehead Horror Express is a great film. Oh yeah, Horror Express, which isn't Hammer, and I think I knew that. Um, but it was, you know, um, Peter Cushing was in that one. 
Yo, he and Christopher Lee, yeah, the dynamic. Christopher Lee was in there as well. Oh, yeah, the heavy I, hitters. I don't think I've seen that since the last time you played it. Mm. Yeah. You may want to stick that on again sometime in the future if you're looking for requests. All right. Well, you might just see that come up here fairly soon. I thought I played that not too long ago, but I'll have to I'll have to check. And if oh, I have did it, you? I, I'll put it on there. John says, you've been watching Chill Night Live with Brian Hogue and his special guest. Ah, you're special tonight. Oh, I got, I got special. <laughs> 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 this is Krozak the Grand reminding you. <laughs> to remember that Mother's Day is this weekend. That's right. That's right. It's this weekend. So oh, get her something extra nice until next week. Stay chilled and keep thrilled. Yes, give her something motherly. Yes. Uh, Stephanie says, I love your Wolfman t-shirt. Thank you, Stephanie. I appreciate that. Well, I got my Jurassic Park. Yes. So, But that's not as cool. <laughs> I mean, you know, this is the Wolfman. Well, I mean... I was I was gonna wear my Chiller Night Theater T-shirt, but so much of it is gone now. You can't really tell what it's just got a couple of specks in here. Oh, I guess I've worked too much. Bonin says Hammer had so many good movies, it'd be really hard to pick one. Yes, oh, I I hear you. Bonin says Brian plays that, and personally, I don't think he could play it too much. LOL. Oh yeah, the Horror Express. Oh, speaking of the movies. I'll put the schedule up again here for this Saturday night, May 13th on Stream TV. Chiller Night Pre-Show will be on at 8 o'clock Eastern Time. That's the one you're watching right now. 9 p.m. The movie is Manos, The Hands of Fate. That was actually a request, believe it or not. <laughs> and 1025, Children Shouldn't Play with Dead Things. And then at 12.05, the movie is Adam Age Vampire. And at 1.45, the movie is The Werewolf of Washington. Now, that is the lineup for Chiller Night Theater episodes coming right at you on this Saturday, May 13th on Stream TV, streammedia.tv. Look it up, watch it, and uh, hopefully enjoy. And also, check out, for those of you who get, get a chance to check out chillernight.com. That is the website that covers all the stuff that... Uh, I'm trying to accomplish here. <laughs> Chillernight.com. Give it a give it a look, see if you would. Mm. Um, let's see. Bonus says to all the mothers out there, have a happy Mother's Day. The rest of us well enjoy. Yes, definitely. Uh, Bonus says watch dumbbell bonehead try to text in Saturday night for the pre-show. <laughs> Maybe one of these days we'll get back there on a Saturday night. Raymond's yeah, we need to have a. <laughs> you need to get a call-in component here. I'd, I'd love to hear Bonehead call in. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we ought to do that. We should do that. You had mentioned that, and we got we got like one minute left. But you had mentioned that like last week something about the call. I'll have to talk to you about that. See if we can get something set up. Um, I'm SBC, sure we can. SBC says, "Oh no, the hour is all, is already over. See you next week. Stay healthy and watch TV a lot." Yes, yes. So, hey, everybody, thank you very much for joining Tom and I. And, Tom, thanks for being my special guest tonight. And, of uh, course. I appreciate you guys. My pleasure. <laughs> What's that? My pleasure. Ah, yes, yes. I, I always enjoy coming on here. A fun hour it was. Uh, and, again, thank you all for joining us and, uh, and each other on the show. And with that, have a good night. Do you have anything you'd like to say? Have a good chiller night. All right. There you heard it from the man himself. And we will see you next week. All right. See you guys.